All right, welcome back. So now that we've gotten the equipment grounding conductors out of the way, let's move on to determining the number of conductors in a box and how to do the volume count and all those little good things that we've talked about a little bit previously, but now we're gonna get a little deeper into it. Okay, so hopefully you've got your code books handy and you're in our course material and we're gonna be in 3-2C. So let's go on and get in it. All right, determining the number of conductors. So we have to know how to look at a box and determine the conductor count. The only way we can do a volume count is to determine the conductors and how we do that. So let's kind of look at that. So this is broken down into A through G, and you can see we have a, a great illustration here to kind of let us play with it. This is a four by four by one and a half cubic inch box. I believe in uh, 314.16A that this is actually 21 cubic inches. Okay, we can go double check that, but I believe that's what it is for this metal box. So let's kind of determine the conductors and how everything enters. All right, A says raceway fittings, connectors, hubs, etc. are not counted. So again, A, this is on the outside of the box over here. These are not counted. They're outside of the box. So we're not gonna count any lock nuts in here. They really don't take up any volume to be considered with, okay? But in this case, since they have a raceway coming in, it looks like an EMT set screw, that this is outside fitting. So that doesn't take up any volume. So we're okay there. Uh, let's see here. B says each conductor originating, this is important again, and you've heard me say this in other videos. Each conductor originating outside of the box that is terminated, means to a device, or is spliced to wire nuts or wire binding devices, inside the box count as one conductor. And that is given to you in 314.16B1. So we're gonna highlight that. Again, as always, please pause the video, grab your code book, and look at it and read it to get a better understanding. Now, in our case, B is pointing to these two red ones here. And it says, these red conductors are counted as two conductors. Absolutely. We got one coming in from this raceway. We have one coming in from this raceway. One volume count, two volume count. Makes sense? Now, these are probably get spliced together, but that's irrelevant. They're entering in from this raceway, that's one. Entering from this raceway, another one. Let's look at C. Now C says this box, and again, let's see where C is pointing to the box. It says this box, as pictured, contains five conductors. If all the conductors are 12, the box could hold a maximum of nine conductors, all right? So table 314.16a, so we're gonna go verify that. But let's see here, let's see how many, it says it's got five conductors, so let's see here. So right now it's got one, two, three, four, five. Now why is it not, is this loop, remember you saw in a previous video, if this loop is passing through and it is not more than 12 inches or 12 inches or more, then it is only one volume. So that's why we got one, two, three, four, five. Now, if this loop, again, I keep reiterating this so you can remember these things, if this loop is at least 12 inches and somebody could come in here and cut this, then we would have a different volume count. We would have one, two, three, four, five, six. But this loop, nothing is telling us that this is more than 12 inches or more. Nothing is telling us that. So we're not gonna assume that. And it doesn't look like it's 12 inches or more. So anyway, so. But let's validate all this stuff. So here we go. It says it's five, and it says that this box could actually hold nine. So let's go and look. Now the size of this box real quick is four by four by one and a half. So let's go to the code. And let's go up here. So it says that it is a, let's bring this up. I'll, I'll pull this full screen. So this was a four by four by one and a half square box. So let's see, we're here, we got four, 16th, that's not what we want. So here we go, four, and it, that's not gonna have four, four, one and a half. You just need to know that this is a square box. So it only needs to give four. That should tell you it's a four by four, okay? And then the depth here is one and a half. So if that's the case, and we're talking about the size conductors in here, we're 12, 
All right, so now we're going to just highlight this out so it's easier to follow. So we'll just do this and move out to the right. All right, and there's your 12, and there's your nine. So there's no devices in that box, right? So as it said, that since there's no devices in there, then I could put in this box, if we're just talking conductors, I can put up to nine in this box. But as you saw when we counted it, we only had five because this right here, this loop wasn't 12 inches or more, so it only counts as one. Make sense? All right, so let's go on here. Remember, conductors that does not leave the box, such as equipment bonding jumpers or pigtails are not counted. So this little jumper right here, this is not counted. This little pigtail may be over to the device, so this jumper doesn't count. And this little pigtail, even though it does take value up in the box, it doesn't count when we do box fill. Only the conductors that enter into the box count, okay? And E, you see this one right here passing through? It says the conductor that passes through the box without a splice or termination unbroken count as one conductor. Again, if it was what? Twice the free conductor requirement, which is six inches in, okay, in 300.14, so that makes it 12 inches. So if it was 12 inches or more of a loop, then it would count as two conductors, right? It'd be the one this way and the one this way. But since it's less than 12, we're only counting it as one. Uh, let's see here, E, F, no, F, right here. So these are the grounded conductors. And it says each conductor originating outside the box uh, that are terminated or spliced in a box count as one conductor. So we got one coming from this way and we got one coming from this way. Okay, even though they're spliced together in the box, okay, each one of them count as a volume. So each white conductor counts, and so that means you have two of them in there. G, G is this wire connector right here. You don't count it, okay? It's not counted, even though it does take up volume, it's not counted when it comes to the box fill. So all this makes sense. You're not counting these pigtails. You're only counting conductors that originate and come, not, excuse me, that come into the box, not those that are originating out of the box, okay? That's why you don't count these jumpers. We have a note. Note says each space within a box installed with a barrier shall be count, uh, calculated separately. That's under 300.16a. So that means if I'm putting two devices in here and I have to, and I put a separator down the middle and I slide it in, whether it's metal or it's non-metallic, it separates the two. And now whatever the volume is of this box gets divided in half, subtracting the volume for the divider now you treat each space separately when it comes to box fill, okay? Make sense? All right. So hopefully you got that. It's pretty straightforward. Just kind of remember in your mind, we only count the conductors that come into the box, not those that are born or originate inside of the box, like equipment bonding jumpers and, and little pigtails. We don't count those. Only those that come into the box. So all this is redundant for you, but it's starting to make sense, I hope, all right? All right, we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully you got something out of that. Keep working in your course, keep reading the material, and anytime you see those code references, make sure you go to those code references. See you in a, in a bit.